Is learning football from YouTube better than actually learning from a coach? See, that's the big question we're gonna answer today because this is Q&A episode 28 and we're gonna head straight into football. Now, quick spoiler alert, disclaimer time. We are at a Puma event in London. Some cool stuff is gonna come out from here soon. So if there's some noise, you know what's happening. Bear with us. Day, Mike. But first question. So as the title of the video suggests, the issue with learning football on YouTube and mostly on YouTube uh, is, well, there are a few things. There are pros, there are cons, but we're gonna give you three facts on why it's not such a good idea. And the first one is that you can't get feedback on what you do. So when you have a normal coach and you have him face to face, he can tell you how to do stuff, you can then do it, and he can tell you what you're doing wrong, how to improve. But if it's just like one-way communication, you're watching a screen, then going to do it, you might be doing it wrong from the get-go, <laughs> and then no one's gonna correct you. And you know, this can be actually very dangerous, especially if it's about, you know, physical yeah. exercises. Yeah, you can do some no, damage. You can do some damage in the long term. Yeah. Point number two, do the people who have, you know, the nerves to teach you things actually have anything to put on the table? Like, you know, what gives them the authority to teach you stuff and uh -huh. why should you listen to them? Are they telling you everything you need to know? If it's a skill, are they teaching you all the right way to do things or are they just simplifying them step by step? And that is fact number three, that tutorials on YouTube are because, you know, people don't want to watch a tutorial of, of like five hours. Well, they are simplified, right? You got to boil it down to the most important things. That's true. But Jay, Mike, it's not all bad no, 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 in the no. world of YouTube because obviously there's great stuff coming out from YouTube episodes as well. I'm gonna start. Obviously, you know, you can get inspired and motivated and you can discover tons of new skills or, you know, exercises or drills. And that's the beauty of YouTube is that it's easily accessible. So you might not have access to a coach, either via your club or you maybe not, don't even play at a club, right? You just play on the streets. So YouTube is a very like good tool to get at least something. And the other thing is that, okay, you don't know if people are actually good at what they teach, but often, if you have the audacity to go on camera and say, oh, look, this is how you do a certain thing, X, X, Y, Y, you gotta be at least confident that you know what you're talking about to a certain level. I mean, you're not gonna go out and tell people how to shoot free kicks if you don't feel comfortable that you have credibility in people's eyes that they're gonna believe you. And this is a great point. And I just want to cut you and jump to the last one because there are lots of people who will teach you stuff even though they have nothing to put on the table. Like, so it comes down to you. So you need your, like, to your, be critical, man. Yes, you need a bullshit detector when you're watching <laughs> stuff. But honestly, this is how it is. With YouTube and with life, don't believe everything you see on the interwebs because some people are not real, some people are real, and it's up to you to decide what's real and what you can use for yourself. Does practicing freestyle moves improve your soccer skills in a soccer match? And the easy answer here is no, because you don't want to do AK 3000s or, you know, hop the world in a football match unless you're really daft and, and want to be kicked down. But that said, the more time you have the ball and the more control you get over the ball, it's going to benefit you in a football match. Now, obviously, you know, freestylers are known to be very friendly and, you know, comfortable with the ball at their feet. Obviously not in an 11 aside uh, situation, but again, it's better than sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. So the answer is yes and no. But there is one more question in this category, and it is, how do you get sponsored buy a big brand and make your own boots? Life is not easy. Like, obviously, you need to be either very lucky, very well connected, you need to be perhaps a superstar footballer playing yeah, in yeah. a big club, <laughs> or you need to just be super influential, or in uh, you know you need to be like you know Elon Musk and be 50 <laughs> years ahead and come to the brands and put something Listen, on the table that they can no, say no to. There's no like treasure map. You can just fold out and see. Okay, there's a the treasure. I'm gonna go this, this, and this. There's no blueprint of how to do this. So take your chances make your voice heard and, and that's basically yeah. uh, hopefully how you can get there. And with those words, J Mike, we move on to the real talk. My turn here. Why did David Beckham say that the best moment of his career was the red card? Listen, the answer here is that obviously the red card situation, for those of you who know, uh, it was a very critical moment in the career of, of David Beckham. And instead of saying that, you know, the free kick against Greece was the best moment of his career, this was maybe the time when he discovered a lot about himself, a lot about the game. Moment, right? The defining moment of David Beckham, especially, you know, the struggle and the comeback that followed uh -huh. the red card. This is who David Beckham is, right? He took the, the media and the criticism by the balls 
pun intended, and then he said, look, I'm gonna own this. This is who I am. I made a mistake, but I'm coming up, I'm gonna come back stronger. And he is now the icon and the, the legend in, in English football, and maybe even in football, if you can go that far, and just say, look, I don't, I don't give a shit. And now people in England, they love him. Next question. Do you really think that doing something superstitious before a match helps? For me, I, I don't have any superstitious things I need to do. I understand that if you have something and it's important to you, you've convinced yourself in your head that you need to do something, it might help you. But I think that, you know, if you at some point forget to do it or get, you know, uh, restricted from, you know, tying your right laces first, I mean, you're not gonna suck. There's not gonna be some divine intervention and that, you know, a rain cloud is gonna follow you just yeah. because you forgot to drink five Red Bulls. I think this is a similar question to like saying, you know, does believing in God make you a better person? Who am I to judge your things? If you know what I mean. Yeah. My advice would be try out some different things. Having a routine yeah. in general helps. Like, you know, you have a routine of waking up early and going to school. Exactly, blah, blah, blah. but it's all about what, what you feel. And that kind of leads us into the next question. What drills to do? during individual training. I can tell you what, what I'm gonna focus on, but it's all gonna be based on what you wanna improve as a player. Do you wanna get faster? Then you should focus on doing speed drills. Do you wanna improve as a goalkeeper? Then you shouldn't go with like cones and improve your dribbling. That will be daft, right? And obviously, if you wanna become a better player, you need to train hard and try to make your training sessions as game-like as possible, because in the end, nothing else matters than how you perform in real football matches. Start That's slow it. until you feel comfortable and then constantly push yourself to up the tempo. And upping the tempo, we're gonna move on to my favorite section. The Dice TM, your favorite World Cup ball. There's only one answer to this question, and that the is team guys. the team guys from 2006. Obviously, like, like, a legendary it's, footballer. It's, it's not the, like, from a performance perspective, it's not the best football, but looks wise, like, it's such an iconic ball. What do you think about the new Nike Phantom Vision Elite? Is it better than the Adidas Predator 18 Plus? I would probably take the Phantom. I don't know about you. Yeah, I would probably take the Predator, but <laughs> but you know I like the plushness of the you know the, the slightly more damp and sensation. But I understand people who like the Visions. They're comfortable. The upper soft. And the Predator uh, is laceless, man. Yeah, that's true. With that in mind, I would probably take the the Visions as well. Yeah. I, I need my lockdown. But with that said, I would take the other Phantom, the new Venom, over both of them. Why don't other brands like Nike make anti-clock boots? There's a couple of ways to approach it. One is that maybe the other brands don't believe in the technology. Maybe they don't think that this is even worth putting on and making a big fuss about. Uh -huh. Secondly, maybe they don't wanna take this technology uh, because it might make them look like copycats. Exactly. And, and thirdly, obviously, they would never make a technology and have it called the exact same thing as the other no, brands. Like, you know, obviously we have Prime Knit, we have Fly Knit, Fly Knit yeah. we have Able Able needs. Needs. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's not like they're like, like super genius na names in terms of differentiation, but they're uh, different, right? And and I think number two is a major key here. Nike won't go out and make laceless boots because it's such an Adidas thing, right? So Adidas are not going to make the super Nike thing either. Yeah. I, I think I think that kind of makes sense. Now the final question here is one of my favorite questions ever in Q and A. Which ball gives you the curve control and ability to really hammer the ball? And the name of that ball is technique and practice. And techers. And techers. If you really want to make things count and be awesome and make every ball hammer and curve, work on your technique. There are no shortcuts. Man, people in today's world are just looking for shortcuts. They want everything fast and yesterday. Nothing comes easily or for free. You got to work towards it. You got to put your mind to it. And then you're going to reap the benefits. And that's the way it is. And with those now that's words, it, we move on to the giveaway. And I have the winning question from my man, Jonah Paul. Who knows, maybe he's related to Logan and Jake. I guess we'll never find out. Which might be the most budget freestyle shoes? The most budget freestyle shoe out there would probably be the Archive Lights, but they don't make them anymore. So you're gonna have to do a bit of eBaying and every freestyler is looking for them so they're gonna be hard to come by. <laughs> but if you want an, like a, a, an accessible boot, you, you can actually buy. The Netfit Lite is also rather good. Nice fit, they're light. Uh, they have the same sole as the Archive, right? So, so obviously it would help if you mention what is the budget. But no matter what, you're we gonna win this indoor freestyle shoe right here and we're gonna get in touch and we can tell you more about it but now we move on to the final question of the day the question, question of, of the month, month. And, and it's a funny question how can fat people play football listen obviously the way to approach this is to play with your strengths 
you know? If you are a little bit overweight, overweight uh, heavy. maybe you are not the wing, <laughs> wingster. You are, the not wingster. The, you are not the CR7 back from Man United. No, no. There's also like this thing called a tank center forward, right? <laughs> Especially if you play loyally, you can definitely do that. And some of the most stocky guys I've played with have been really, really good on the ball because often they try to compensate for their lack of like movement and speed and agility by being really, really solid strikers. And really annoying to play against. Oh, because, because imagine you know, shielding yeah. the ball. <laughs> it, 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 so, you know, there's no reason you can't play football if you are, let's call it, overweight or fat or whatever you want to say, but you just got to be self-aware. And this is the message of today, the life lesson number two. Find out what you can do and then go and do that. Don't try to do everything else that you know you're not good at. Find out what your qualities are in football and in life, and then go work on like loving those and, and improving those, and everything's gonna work out. And with those and words. And you're welcome. <laughs> with yeah. those words, you're welcome. We need to cut it right here. We have some interviews. We need to go and rush and make. You're gonna see them very, very soon. But in the meantime, make sure to leave some more questions down in the comment section below for the next Q&A for next month for Unisport Q&A exactly. episode 29. And once you've done that, go and subscribe to our channel by clicking right over there. Also, click the notification bell button to make sure you see all our videos in the future. If you need some good football stuff, you know, buy everything your heart desires from unisports.com. And finally, go watch some very cool videos by clicking right down there. With that said, guys, we're signing off. See you later.